Hi, Leanne Donoghue Tamplin here. Today I'm interviewing Kerry Potthast. Kerry has competed at the top levels of her field of volleyball for over 25 years. She's been to three Olympics, including winning two medals, one of which was a gold at Sydney 2000. She's had to overcome significant injuries and surgeries throughout the course of her career to be able to achieve those successes. So I'll be talking to her today about how she was able to do that. She's now a speaker, a coach and an author. I hope you enjoy my interview with Kerry. Thanks and I'll talk to you again soon. I know you've had so many huge accomplishments in your life, Kerry, um, but how do you define success? That's a good one to start with. Um, how do I define yeah. success? Well, to me, success is, is doing what you love. For a start, I think, you know, there's no point having a gold medal or a lot of money or a big home or a great, incredible career unless you're enjoying it. So, if, number one, the enjoyment factor, the fun has to be part of it. Yeah. Um, and number two, I guess just I don't, I'm not sure. I, I don't think you can ever define it in one word. I think it, it's just, it's a growing and an ongoing thing. So for me, I'm always looking at ways of being better at something. So mm. I, I guess it could be quite stressful sometimes never being kind of happy with where you are, but mm. that's what I need to work on more. That's, that's where I need to, to, to get better at just being happy with where I am because I'm quite driven. And so for me, success is always kind of, oh, okay, I set myself a goal and then I reach it. And so that goal could be as small as, you know, being better at making my son's school lunches or something. It's not, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a silly, it's not a, a goal, in fact, but it's just something I think, you know what, I could be better at giving him healthier food. Mm. So, and then when I achieve that and I'm, I'm doing that for him each and every day, that's success for me. So yeah. it's, it's having a thought in mind, a goal in mind and achieving it, I guess, whether that goal is little or a gold medal. It sounds like though it, you, you get to one and then you want to get to the next one, you know, you you know, without, you know, you kind of don't take too long sitting in that I've got there. You focus on, so now what can I do next? Is that right? Yeah, it's absolutely. That, that's me to a T, which is great most mm. of the time. But like I said, sometimes it can be a little, not stressful, but kind of, I, I put a fair bit of pressure on myself going, okay, like I've made it to this point. Now what's yeah. next? And I know I used to do that in my volleyball team with Natalie, who I played and won a gold medal with. It would be yeah. like, okay, we've got to this level. How do we now get to the next level? You know, what do we need to do? So I was always the one, I was always seeking more information. And I think, you know, to be successful in anything, you need to, to, be a learner. You need to be a student. My, my coach used to always say, be a student of the game. So I'd watch any sort of level volleyball game up to the top level and just be a student and look and seek out, you know, what are they doing that I can do? Because I think we can't, you know, model ourselves on one particular person because there's going to be something about that person that's not you. You still have to be authentic and real in you. So I'd always look around and go, what is that person doing? Oh, yeah, I could do more, more of that. And so I, I do model myself, you know. My sister is a, is a beautiful mother and I know I watched her bring up her children and I thought that's, you know, that's the type of mum I want to be, you know, for yeah. instance. Mm. model myself on other, other so there's like this curiosity by the sounds of things about how other people are doing things not not just in one area in a lot of different areas and yeah. you're gathering that information and how can i how can i improve myself and be like that how can i yeah. learn that yeah well one of our main um sayings to each other was how can we make it better how can we make it better? And that kind of originated out, out of like sitting down in a timeout in the middle of a match going, okay, well, things aren't going so well. Let's not dwell on the past. Yeah. Let's look forward and go, well, how can we make it better? What can we do? This is mm -hmm. change what's happened. What can we do next? And so that, that became how can we make it better? And Olympic Games, it was really interesting because we, we – we said, how can we make that sentence better? Mm. And we changed it to how can I make us better? So it was like, okay, now I'm going to step up and take responsibility. It's not about, you know, you and I doing the same sort of thing. Now I'm going to take more responsibility and make us better. So mm. that's kind of what we went to. So we're always looking at making that better. <laughs> Do you think you've always been like that? Like if you've always been a person, like even as a kid, were you always striving for better? 
Um, I think I was always striving to maybe be the best um, because I, I vividly remember, and I don't know why, but I remember a birthday party where we were playing pin the tail on the donkey and I didn't win and I was crying at my own <laughs> birthday party as a young girl. So I was obviously quite competitive. Yeah. Um, but my parents were fantastic around always making sure I had fun and they never pushed me. They, they never kind of said, come on, come on, come on. Like it was almost like my parents just expected me to do well, but not in a pushy way. So I'd ring my mother from somewhere in, I don't know, some random country in the world and she'd go, oh, how did you go in the world tour event? And I'd go, oh, we finished second. And she goes, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but I expected you to win everything. So it was more like out of love that they just yeah. thought, oh, you, you are going to be really good at this. You are really good at this. So yeah. it was kind of a really, that maybe that's why I'm, I'm, you know, I can deal with trying to always get to the next level, but in a, in a nice way. And I don't beat myself up when I don't. I just kind of dust myself off mm -hmm. and go, okay, what can I do this time to try again? And I yeah. try again and I try again. So that's, I mean, that, that's kind of leads on to the next question I want to ask you is, were there times during this journey of yours to make having all these accomplishments where you felt like you wanted to give up? Um, you never, had, some, had some tough times, right? Yeah, look, I had, obviously I had a, a really serious injury in the middle of my athletic career. So I played indoor volleyball for 10 years and then Real, I didn't even, I don't think I even sprained a finger or I definitely wow. roll an ankle, nothing in those 10 years um, representing Australia and travelled around the world playing in a team of 12. Yeah. And then I, at one championship, I jumped, landed, twisted and I blew, blew my knee to smithereens. So I ruptured all my ligaments, my meniscus, my cartilage, my cruciate ligament, my medial ligament. I just wrecked everything. Yeah. Um, and I was out for the count and literally sitting on the couch for three months. I'd had three surgeries over that time. I'd lost 10 kilos over that period. And I'm quite a small frame anyway. I'm quite tall, but I lost a lot of muscle and I, you know, I, was, I was probably quite depressed. I mean, back then, you know, depression wasn't really talked about much. So I'd say I was pretty, pretty close to, you know, getting really down because everything from in my life at that time was, all about you know volleyball and traveling and my friends and it was my whole social network everything and so that was ripped away from me so during that time it was really hard um, but I never again I didn't entertain the thought of giving up I just kept thinking how long is it going to take me to get back right yeah. so giving up is just not in my you know vocabulary if I set myself a goal I don't give up. Like if I want to cut a tree down, I'll find anything I can. I'll sharpen the saw. I'll keep going. I'll push it. I'll get people to help me. I won't try and do it myself either. And I think that's a key mm -hmm. point. You yeah. know, when you're trying to achieve something, you, you can't just know that, you know, success is not done on your own. It's done as a team. Um, yeah. So, you know, I'll get people to help me. I'll just keep pushing, pushing until, you know, I'll do their, until it gets dark and until I get that tree down, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah cut a tree down, but that's what I would do if I had to. <laughs> so, yeah, so at that point, um, it was quite interesting. I didn't give up. I just started thinking, okay, how long is it going to take? And my boyfriend actually gave me a volleyball and he said, on every panel of this ball, I want you to write a goal. So I actually filled this ball out mm. with all the goals and put dates on it. And then the last goal was getting back on the court and playing for Australia again. Yeah. And you know, I, I put dates on all those goals, but I didn't really know. I had no idea how long it was going to take me. Mm -hmm. Surgeons kind of told me oh, maybe around about a year until you're fully able to um, function again. They never said that I was going to play again, but they never yeah. said I wasn't going to be able to play again. Yeah. So no one put that, that thought in my head. Um, I just thought, okay, a year, right. What do I need to do month by month? And I broke it down month by month. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got to things on the ball on the on the month that I couldn't do, and I'm like, God, I can't do that. So I just went to the next one, and I came back to that, or I never completed that step. But it just gave me something to focus on, and because it was on a ball, it was three dimensional, you know, it meant something. Like it was actually that's what I want to get back to, hitting yeah. that ball around on the court. But then I never actually got back to playing indoor for Australia because I couldn't. So, because it was just too bad an injury to go on the hard floorboards. Right. And I actually even moved cities to join the indoor national team at their first ever kind of um, 
full-time program in one place. All the players came in to live in Perth. Yeah. And I moved there like six months after my injury in anticipation of, you know, getting back into the team and, and wow. training full time. And I tried to train and I just, I just like, I couldn't do it. Yeah. So there was, so there actually was one other thing on that ball. It said beach volleyball. And I knew that the Atlanta Olympics were coming up in 1996. Um, and I went because this injury happened in 1992, so we're talking a long time ago. Yeah. But so there was a, a three three years until um, qualification, and I just wrote underneath really small. I wrote Atlanta Olympics, you know, and then I quickly turned the ball back over and thought, well, you know, okay, I got to go back to indoor first, and then maybe I can look at doing beach. But after mm-hmm. a year, I couldn't play indoor, so I switched to beach, and then the rest was history. I ended yeah. up. Playing playing in three Olympics on the beach and winning two Olympic medals. So, so I really like how you, um, you had goals on there that you went, oh, that didn't happen at the right time. And you didn't kind of beat yourself up and go, well, what's the point? Then it's all hopeless. You just went, oh, well, I'll just turn it to another angle and see the next one that I can get to. You kind of didn't get stuck on the goals. No, I didn't get stuck on the goals. And, you know, I rarely beat myself up. Maybe once or twice a year I'll get down and really go, oh, bloody hell, and I'll really kind of lose it, you know. Yeah. But I am quickly get back. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know. It's just something I, I, just, I just want to achieve. I just want to achieve. I want to create. I love creating new things. Um, you know, I, I love marketing. I probably would have worked in marketing. I love creating new stuff to that looks mm. good, sounds good, and feels good, makes people feel good. Uh, yeah. You know, and I love, and I do a lot of motivational speaking now, and I love that because I, yeah. you know, I, I love the feedback afterwards. People come up to me and go, "Wow," you know, and then they tell me their story about where they're at and how mm. something that I've just said has has made a light bulb go off in their head and they're like, I'm going to do that, you know, and I can just cheer them on and go, yes, you can. And so, you know, I believe in other people and sometimes you have to borrow other people's belief first before Mm. you kind of believe it yourself. And I think that's what the ball was. I I think that was someone else saying, I believe you can do this. And even if you're doubting it, you know, so every time you had a bit of doubt, you could pick up the ball and it felt like, well, someone else believed in me. Yeah, that was the, well, the boyfriend that I had at the time. He believed in me. He said, right, this is what you're getting back to. Yes. I want you to write all your goals on there so you've got something to basically do and something to focus on. I think the biggest yeah. thing about having a, having set, setting mm-hmm. goals is having something to focus on. And everybody knows about goal setting and some people are like, oh, yeah, goal setting. Yeah. All right. You know, and some people are a bit wishy-washy about it. But I think it's so important to have you yeah something to go for like the beacon to follow yes uh, and then working out how to get there is is the fun part but there's kind of there's two different types isn't there there because on your ball there were the monthly things but there was always also the you know could i ever possibly do this other one you know so there was the, the kind of big crazy goal that i hope one day i could get to but there was all these little monthly steps yep towards it um but, and your plan didn't go that way but it ended up getting to that goal anyway yeah 100 percent. and and the funny thing is then once i was playing beach volleyball going for a gold medal was just like a pie in the sky for us like yes. when we first got together so we had a, a volleyball coach we had a, a personal trainer fitness coach who traveled with us everywhere as well and then we introduced what we called a success coach mm-hmm. so then we had a success coach and it was him that really then um, helped us to believe that we could win the gold before it happened. Yeah. So for you to be able to achieve something, you've got to believe that you can actually yeah. get there. So he, he, he just, he taught us to, to be okay with stepping out of our comfort zone. He taught us to be okay with not believing, you know, but knowing that it will happen. Like you'll, you'll start to build your belief in yourself again. You'll start to build, you know, the courage to take the next step. He's like, that's okay. That's so normal. Um, and it's all part of the process. So he taught us that this, these up and downs were all part of the process. Like you've yeah. seen the image where, you know, success yeah. isn't just a straight line. It's just a squiggly line all over the place. I mean, yeah. gosh, we had times when, you know, Natalie and I thought there's not one more day we can spend together. Like that's it. We just mm-hmm. cannot be together one more day. Yeah. You know, we were on everything the other person was doing was getting on our nerves because we were traveling together. Gotcha. 
you know, we were rooming every hotel together, spending trainings, games, you know, winning was great. But when we were losing, it was terrible. You yeah. know, you go back to your room after you lose and it's either your fault, her fault or both your faults, you know. Yeah. And or even just being angry at something else, even if it's not each other, you're just angry at, I don't know, the weather or, or yeah. whatever it was, you know, you're still angry, aren't you? You're not sitting there happily communicating to one another. Oh, exactly. Um, but we were normally angry at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we had to learn how to, you know, for us it was really about relationships. We had to learn yeah. how, how to be in a relationship with, with each other when we, we may not have picked each other to be friends with, you know. Yeah. So, it's like getting married to somebody that you don't really, it's not your type of person because we were yeah. living together like we were married. Yes. Because we had to be together 24 seven most of the time when we were on tour. And then at home, we actually lived in different cities most of the time. So we had to, you know, when we were in her city, I lived with her when she was in our city, you yes. know, I lived with, she lived with us. So it was, yeah, it was, it was yeah. pretty trying. I mean, there's, there was definitely, you know, some really, bad moments but yeah. we had this common goal and I think when you talk about mm. okay when things are really down how do I get myself out we had a common goal and we had a plan we we knew what we had to do to get there we had a plan we we knew why we wanted to get there I think that was that was a really crucial part we had to we had to work out well, why do we want to win a gold medal what what is it going to mean to us and so we actually set about we put a plan together and we called it a gold medal excellence plan and it had all the components of our why, our purpose. It had the rules that we had to uphold, had everything we had to do to beat every team in the world. And it had the characteristics of who we needed to be to win a gold medal. And we didn't make them up. We looked around at the other gold medalists. So, you know, I say to people, if you, if you want to be like this person, what are they doing? Like, what are yeah. characteristics? How do they deal with the ups and downs? How do they deal with the knockbacks, the resilient, you know, how are they being resilient? And so we looked at characteristics and we said, okay, let's, let's emulate these characteristics that we think we could, you know, depending on who we were as people, and let's just be that. And then eventually along the way, we'll pick up the gold medal. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, one of the questions I was going to ask you is what strategies you've used, but you've kind of highlighted a whole lot of those. Is there anything else that you did? Was there meditation or, um, I don't know, I, you know, you did visualisation and goal setting. Um, was there anything yeah. else like that? We, we pushed ourselves out of our comfort zone with physical things, being athletes. So, yeah. you know, we did... We went away on little weekends with our group of five, so our three coaches and, and Natalie and myself, and we put this plan together. We brainstormed the plan. And we put it, we set it out in Olympic rings. Uh, I haven't got it handy right here. But we set it out in Olympic rings wow. and we gave it a name, Gold Medal Excellence. We all signed. It was like a contract saying this is what we're doing. And our goal was not to win a gold medal. It was to actually achieve gold medal excellence. So... That was the difference, I think. It wasn't like we're trying to win a gold medal. It was we're trying to be gold medalists. Yes. Does that make sense? So yeah. Instead of trying to, to buy a house, it was who do we have to be to make the money to afford to buy the house? Does that make yeah. sense? What do we have to do instead of... But we still had that gold medal there, obviously. It was like the, the vision, but we would pick that up along the way. And that's why my life has continued on in this fashion because it didn't end there. Yeah. And a lot of athletes have a lot of trouble when they finish their athletic career because there was an end point. Whereas for us, it was just a continuation. We just keep living our lives with gold medal excellence, you know, yeah. and that's how I, I always try and do things. Um, but back to your question. So we did physical things like we walked on hot coals. We did like the Anthony Robbins. Wow. Yeah. So just get used to being out of our comfort zone too. Cause when you're, you know, in sport, when you're really close to that win or when you, you know, you have to do something different, you, you're always out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. in sport. Like you're always being pushed to the next level, being pushed, yeah. pushed, pushed to perform, um, you know, pushed by yourself, by your partner, whatever. But so being out of your comfort zone, we had to just be okay with that. You know, yeah. and often there's so, so many people just, oh no, that's, that's uncomfortable. I won't try that. Well yeah. then, you'll always get the same results. You're ne never going to move forward. You're never going to, you know, get out of where you're at. But to I think, I think too, with sport, you kind of, well, from in my experience with sport, that you, 
um, you can get into a state of panic almost when you're close. The closer you get to winning, the more the panic happens. And, and then you perform badly because, you know, your head's doing the wrong thing for what it needs. You actually need to be calm in that place. Well, um, exactly. And we, we never thought of that as panic either. And, and some people would have, see, it's, it's just a different mindset. Like yeah, when yeah. you say, you know, when you said that with sport and you get close to winning, you panic. I've never, ever heard that or thought of that. Like it's, wow. not, a, it's not something that I would entertain. Yeah. When I get close to winning... I'd be going, what do I need to do to finish this off? Yeah, right. So Natalie and I would be close to winning and we'd turn around and we had to obviously learn this process. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that negative panic. I never had that panic feeling. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to lie. I did. I had this, we're really close. And all we started thinking of, oh, my God, we're almost there, we're almost there. We're... And then because we tightened up, we yeah. lost, right? Yeah. So that's that panic that you're talking about. It's like yeah. in sport, it's kind of like you, you tighten up. Yes. Choke. Um, yeah, yeah. But what we learned was we used to turn around to each other. I'd be standing in the net ready to, to block. She'd be behind me serving. We'd be two points away from winning a game. We would turn around. I would turn around and I'd just go, nail in the coffin. Let's finish this off. Nail in the coffin. So it was yeah. almost like let's step up and put that last yeah. nail in and finish this game off rather than, yeah. you know, just hoping that that last point would happen. So yeah. We, our coach would say, push at the beginning, hold in the middle, and then push at the end. And that mm. was the type of mentality. That was on our gold medal excellence plan. It was yeah. one of the rules that we knew we had to do against yeah. all the good teams in the world because we could push in the beginning against a good team, but then they would come back. So right. we would have to hold, 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 hold. Yeah. And then if we didn't push at the end, they'd take it over. Yeah, right. So that's what we did at the end of our matches. We just yeah. pushed and finished them off. Were there lots of sacrifices that you made or your family made? Again, I'm going to turn it around and go, nothing was a sacrifice. It was yeah. an investment. And yeah, it, right. again, it's all mindset. So if, mm. I felt, if I felt like I was sacrificing something, that would be a negative emotion or a negative feeling. And, mm. and I'd be like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Instead yeah. of going, I'm investing my time to learn, to grow, to do personal development, to go to trainings, to go to seminars, to learn to in order for me to achieve what I want to achieve. But in saying that, we were very aware of balance. So we didn't use the word sacrifice, but we used the word balance. So we made sure that we had time with family, that when we were at events in really cool places overseas, that we may stay on a day or two and enjoy that cool place that we couldn't do during the, the tournament. So we, we were very well balanced, I think, as well. Yeah. Character strengths. So what character strengths do you think you relied on? Now, you may have some in your head already. I've got a few on a list here I might read out so they might prompt your thoughts about it, right? Um, so there's good judgment, um, perseverance and courage, uh, teamwork, forgiveness, self-discipline, um, kindness, connections to others, sense of humour, some spirituality. What, what kinds of things do you think you relied on most? All of those, except maybe the spirituality part, which I'm trying to find more of these days. Yeah. <laughs> my, husband's get, my husband's getting into yoga, so he's getting more, yeah, right. more spiritual and, and learning all that side of life. And I think that's because I've been so driven and focused with all those other things, you know. Yeah. Uh, that I now want to find the softer part of me as well because I think I've, you know, I've been pretty like, um, yeah. but having a child definitely softens that all out. But, yeah, yeah look, along my journey, I guess I, I've, you know, there have probably been times where I've been more of one than the other, but a little bit of everything that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, Driven just comes back to me, you know. I, I am yeah. highly driven. There's no there's no doubt about that. But on the other end of the scale, I'm actually, and I, I say this and people laugh at me, I'm actually quite lazy. <laughs> yeah, I just laughed. <laughs> I don't know how that works when you can be driven but lazy. So I love to just lie on the couch and watch TV. I really do. Yeah. But if I have something to do and I've set myself a goal, mm -hmm. I can't do it. Because I'm like, oh, I've got to go, I've got to go do it, you know. Yeah. But then when I know that I've got time off, I'm quite happy to lie on the couch and watch Celebrity Get Me Out of Here or yeah. 
you know, The Bachelor or something trashy because I just want to, like, because I'm so driven, I just want to chill and do nothing almost. Yeah. Um, and in terms of people relationship-wise, so I learned so much in terms of connecting and, and um, you know, working out how to read people because I, I had to read people on the other side of the net. And oh. I think that was one of my strengths that I, I bring to our team. Natalie was very connected with energies and she would like rear up the, rev up the crowd and really get into kind of the, the celebration and the and it lit, keep the energy up high. Whereas I was always very focused and always looking down at the sand because I was thinking mm -hmm. and I was always thinking strategy and I could look over at my opponents and almost kind of guess what they were going to do next. It didn't always work out, but I would always give the strategy to say, okay, if we do this now, I think this is about to happen, let's do this so we can pick up the ball and, and make the point. So for me, that was probably something, maybe I've got a, a little bit of um, psychic in me. I don't know. Not really. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I, I, don't I, know. I do think reading other people is a real skill though, you know, yeah. trying to work out what's going on for them. When are they looking a bit down? Uh, you know, when, when have we got a bit more edge? You know, I think those things are really important in, in sport. Yeah. Um, where, it, where it actually um, doesn't work for me is when I'm in a social, social situation and I start imagining oh, yeah. that I'm reading something that's maybe not happening. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I, sometimes I, I kind of overthink things because I'm thinking... Yeah. Are they doing this because is that just mm. happened? Do you think that's happened? And you know, and so I start to doubt myself. So I, yeah. I, still, I actually, even though I'm that driven and I've achieved obviously gold medal or whatever, yeah. I still have, I still doubt myself. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. but I don't let, I don't let that doubt stop me or cripple me or hold me back. It's like it's almost like okay, I doubt myself, but I'm going to challenge myself to do it yeah. anyway. You actually said earlier you have one or two days a year, say when you get really down. How do you get out of that? I cry a lot and then I get it out. Oh. <laughs> it's almost like it's something evil inside you and you have to, you know, yeah. get, get whatever the word is, get it out. Um, it, it really helps to just, I just, you know, sometimes I might sob. <laughs> yeah. About it, lie, lie up in a fetal position and just go, oh, my God, why is this happening? Yeah. And then... And then reason takes hold again. So that's kind of the unreasonable kind of reaction to something. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether it's work-related, child-related, husband-related, yeah. finance-related, yeah. uh, you know, because I still have those financial pressures yeah. like we all do. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, so I just kind of, I kind of feel sorry for myself for maybe an hour or so. And then my reasoning starts to go, okay, well, yeah. Lying here feeling sorry for myself is not going to make it better. It's yeah. going to make it worse and it's going to affect everybody around me and I'm not going to be able to move forward. And then I start, then my reasoning brain starts to click in and I start to think, okay, all right, so this is where I'm at. What, I, what can I do now? Mm -hmm. And I think I learned that from, and this, this was a relationship thing that happened to me throughout my beach volleyball career. So in that 10 years where I was going three Olympics in a row, so things were pretty full on. And yeah. I had a relationship which was on and off and it was off at one point. And I remember being on a speedboat with one of my sponsors from Bolle Sunglasses. And we're out off the, the coast of St Kilda and we were doing some... Um, uh, water skiing. And it was a real fun day. And then for some reason, I, cause I was I'd just broken up with my boyfriend at the time again. And I, I just went, I just couldn't stop talking about it. And anyway, at one point, what my sponsor said to me, look to me, Kerry said, it's a long time in a pine box. Yeah, right. And I just, I kind of just sat with it and let it sink in. And, and basically what he meant was, and what I took it as was the longer you keep talking about it, keep worrying about it, keep complaining about it, keep just thinking about it, the longer it's going to take you to move on mm. and life is going, like, yeah. whether, with you or without you. Like, you yeah. just, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. And it just, it really hit me. It was like a slap in the face, like, yeah. shut up and move on, you know. Yeah. And I think sometimes we just want to, I don't know why we want to hold on to pain yeah we have to grieve we have mm -hmm. to grieve there's no no doubt we need to grieve but 
at some point we just have to let go and mm-hmm. and just start finding the great things in life and be grateful and and gratitude something that I work on with my son as well. Each night when he goes to sleep, I say, what was the best thing you did today? And what are you most grateful for? And we've been doing that now for about five years. Mm-hmm. And he won't go to sleep unless I ask him those questions now. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. And now I have to answer him and he copies me and I copy him. And we're like, no, you can't say that again. <laughs> <laughs> and we make it fun, you know. But, yeah. but it just sends him off to sleep thinking of good things. Yeah. You know? And we can talk about them. It's a choice, isn't it? I, yeah. I, I think it's a, you know, you were saying you, when you're in that fetal position and crying, I like that you're kind of respecting the feeling that's coming up, but then you're also going, I don't need to stay in it forever. You know, that's I right. only have to feel it and then I can, I can go, right, what can I do to solve this? Or you kind of, when you're in that space though, you, it's really hard to see those things you're grateful for. It feels like everything, it doesn't just feel like the finances are bad. It feels like everything's wrong. I try hard, you know, I have to have another surgery or, I, you know, something else. It's like a whole, the whole world's terrible. Yeah. And I think you've got to get, move through it a little bit so you can get to that place where you can say, wait a minute, I can, these, that's not too bad actually. You know, actually that's, you know, yeah. And pain, can be, and pain can be a real driver as well. Absolutely. You know, when you hit rock bottom, that's, that's where you draw a line in the sand yeah. and you just step over it and just go, right, that's it, no more. I don't want yeah. to feel like this anymore. I want to do something about it. So pain yeah. and pleasure. So the other one is pleasure. Things are going great. You want more? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my last question, Kerry, is would you do anything differently if you had your time again? Would there be anything you'd change? Yeah, that's yeah. People ask that question a lot, and um, and you know, I don't. You know, sometimes I think it would have been great if I never injured my knee. Yeah. Because obviously, from that one injury, I've gone on and had six surgeries over the twenty years. My knees are not good. My hip yeah. now is starting to kind of, you know, um, get sore and stuff up a, up a bit. Um, so, but. If I hadn't have injured my knee, I wouldn't have learned everything. I wouldn't be standing, you know, talking to you today. I wouldn't be, yeah. wouldn't have probably gone to the Olympics. So, or I may not have. Who knows? Who knows? So, yeah. no, it's kind of like you can't really. Yeah. Probably not. There's there's probably some things I've said to people that I would love to take back. You know, after they come out, you kind of go, oh, come back. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably more regrets than what I've done more yeah. of what I've said because I'm very I can be hot-headed and I can be really quick at giving you know my thoughts without it without kind of going how's this going to land like instead yeah. of saying it this way maybe I could say it in a more kind way sometimes mm-hmm. when I'm coaching volleyball uh, some of my teams have said I coach with like a tough love yeah so I'm tough on them because I'm really open with them I'll tell them what I see yeah. but it's comes from love because I really want to help them. It's not because I want to be mean. So sometimes, you know, I have to be careful of making sure it doesn't come across in a harmful way, (laughs) if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's probably one of the the only things that I would regret sometimes, the way I say things to people. So even when you look back and, as you say, with those surgeries and all that, that challenge you had to go through for that year looking at the ball and trying to come back on the hard floor and realising that you couldn't, and then having to switch to, you know, although it's still volleyball, quite a different sport, you know, quite very different skill set, I'm sure, in terms of, of beach versus indoor volleyball. Um, and all the work that you did to try and get to that place, uh, it sounds like, um, you know, even though maybe it could have been an easier path without the, the injuries, it might not have been the same, might not have had the same outcomes. No, and I wouldn't be speaking for all these years as well. So I, I yeah. do multiple speaking um, presentations throughout the year. You know, every yeah. couple of weeks I've got one. So 20 or 30 a year. Yeah. It's because of that. I feel like the life that I've had, I always wanted to be a teacher, by the way. I grew up in Adelaide and I wanted to go to uni and become a teacher, but instead I played volleyball and never went to uni because yeah. I had to work to pay for volleyball trips. Yes. So... I want to teach 
that that's yeah. there was something inside me i have that mm. kind of i want to teach and that's why i coach volleyball still and that's why i yeah. coach other people now with their health and wellness because i love doing that i love kind of helping other people achieve something yeah so if i didn't do all that i wouldn't have learned all those skills and yeah. messages that i could now apply for now so i use that as yeah. a vehicle so i say that the gold medal for me now is the vehicle that i have that i can yeah. inspire other people with so all had to happen to get to this point as most huh. It's kind of pretty nice to have a gold medal too, even if you weren't. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, when you think about it, there were some cool little things that happened, you know, the next year or two after we got some some great opportunities. But again, you know, we were we worked for those opportunities too. They weren't just things weren't thrown at us, you know. Yes. We worked hard. There are other gold medalists from the same Olympics in Sydney that live in Sydney that didn't have the same, that didn't, well, not that didn't have the same, they had the same opportunities, but they sometimes say to us or me, oh, you're so lucky. And I'm like, no, nice. what I've done, what I've created since then and been able to, yes. I haven't worked for anyone since then. I've been like an entrepreneur creating my own opportunities. Yes. It's because I work hard at it. And because like I said, I, I'm like, oh, okay, how can I, how can I make the next you know, bit of yeah. money so I can stay having this lifestyle so yes. I don't have to go and work for somebody else. Yeah. So I've created that and I'm always looking at what can I do next? So I wrote a book, yeah. you know, speaking, and then I, you know, started doing corporate presentations and now I help people with their health and wellness. So there's just like, I just, yeah, yeah I want to keep this kind of, I love this lifestyle. So yeah, I like, you have to make it, you have to get out there and, and do it and just yeah. follow other people that have done what you want to do. Yeah. Just, it tracks. Yeah, I agree. Thank you very much, Kerry. I really appreciate your time. Okay, let's just uh, go through that interview with Kerry and have a look at some of the things that she's identified. There were some key contributors to her success. The first thing that she used a lot of was to model herself on other people's behaviour, other people who'd already succeeded in the fields that she was working in. She would look at what they were doing and then apply that to her own situation. She also said she's always looking at how she can make it better. So it's always asking herself that question and she and her teammate used to do that in their sport. So she's always thinking, okay, even if we're doing well, how can we make this a little bit better? When things don't go well, she said that she doesn't beat herself up about that at all. She just kind of reflects on it works out how she could do it a little bit differently and then maybe adjusts her focus to be more aligned with what she can achieve. And I think that's a really important learning that we can take from all successful professional athletes because they don't always win. So if, if winning is the thing that, that motivates them, then there's a problem when they don't win. So what, what they frequently are able to do well is, is learn from the, the loss identify how to do it differently and and adjust what they're doing a little bit a little bit better um, so yeah I think that's a really valuable thing we can take from that professional athlete world she said that there's a couple of times a year that she'll feel really down when things get really overwhelming for whatever reason there's no necessarily one particular thing that leads to that uh, and when those things happen she lets herself uh, cry, lets herself feel it, lets herself get really down for a little while, but it doesn't last long. She always then moves out of that and into how can I solve this problem? Again, I think that's a really valuable part of, of uh, managing adversity throughout your life, just not getting stuck in it and seeing that it will change if I do something differently or I work out another way to handle this. She said that when she had a really significant knee injury and it looked like she was potentially going to lose everything she knew, all the people she knew, uh, the future she had planned, everything about her life was potentially going to be lost. And throughout that time, although there were times when it was really difficult, she just kept believing that it would change, that it would get better, that if she worked hard, that, that things would improve. Uh, so even, um, and if we, if we look at what she was saying, even when she missed the targets she'd set herself, so she's trying to get out of that overwhelming challenge and not hitting the targets she was aiming for, she still didn't go down the rabbit warren of, of disbelief. 
She stayed focused on, I know if I keep working at this, I will get to something better. Uh, and I think that determination was one of the most significant character strengths um, and, and that high work ethic were things that, huge strengths that Kerry, I think, relied on throughout her, her, her life and her successful sporting career. The final thing that I thought was important to mention was her, her term, this gold medal life. She was saying that they developed that as part of their uh, work towards achieving an actual gold medal. But it was never about a gold medal. It was actually about living the life as if you were a gold medalist. What does that look like? What does that feel like? Um, how do you uh, address issues in your life? How do you uh, achieve things if you're a gold medal winner? Uh, and I guess we can look at that as being living your best life, but it's really stepping out of the place of, um, you know, nothing's going to go my way. And into that feeling of, I know I have an element of control of the outcome. And I think that hope plays a big role in that. And having hope and having an element of optimism is what allows you to keep saying, well, I can live my gold medal life even with a knee injury, even with financial challenges, um, with whatever other problems that happen. It doesn't matter. I can still be living a gold medal life. I think that was a really huge and important um, issue that she raised, something that I think we can all apply in our own lives. All right, hope you enjoyed the interview with Kerry. I thought that was amazing and she gave us so many insights into what it takes to succeed. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for listening.